York. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. It's Ebro in the morning. Beautiful Laura Stiles. Wrestling T. Rosenberg. Kevin that Von Eric, be... rest in peace. Oh, Who? not him. He's alive, actually. Rest in peace, all his brothers. Got it, got Kevin's it. Kevin's the one who's alive, so. I, I don't, I'm not familiar. Von Eric's? Yeah. <laughs> Go to Texas. If you go to get a time machine, go back to 1985 and go to Texas, you'll find out what about. about to find out. Wow. Yeah, you're about to find out. But we know this guy right here, Nick Cannon. What's going on, yeah. baby? What up? What what's up? going what on, up? baby? That's and with you, Kreisha Turner, who is a uh, friend, friend of the Hot 97, okay, Hot 97 and 97 family, family, for sure, for well, sure. Glenn. Artist from Toronto. Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. Where in Toronto? I mean, where in Canada? Edmonton. 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 Not at all. Yeah. Edmonton, Alberta. Yes. Uh, and, and But you guys are here today together because Kreisha, um, outside of making music, has decided, is this your first time acting? Yeah, this is my debut. This it's is it. Film, yeah. In a Nick Cannon production. There it is. Called King of Dance Hall. So King I see, of the Dance Hall. I see this on paper. I'm like, what the f <laughs> is King Can Nick Cannon doing now? Yeah, yeah. We so got what, what do you think? You Beanie Man or something? What's happening? Beanie I Man is in the movie. Oh, he is? Oh, he is. Word up. The Dr. Beanie Man. So what is this King of Dance Hall? Uh, pretty much, it's, it's interesting. And actually, this story actually all originated with, you know, Kreisha as a dance hall artist. And uh, the first time ever my trip to Jamaica was promoting a Kreisha Turner record. And she was like, yo, if we're going to do this, we got to go to the real dance halls. And I went down there and saw the whole world. And I was like, yo, there's never been a story to tell uh, to the mainstream media of this culture. You know what I mean? So I was like, I wanted to get out there and, and share all of the electricity and everything that was going crazy when when I saw the first time for how these guys really move and this lifestyle and this passion down there and you know wrote the script on that that trip and six months later we were down there shooting a the film. Now obviously there's people watching this it's like yo shotters there's been shotters and there's been oh when I say though. the culture I mean I, I mean the dance, dance hall culture. Specific. So I'm saying exactly. when you think of like dirty dancing when you think of Saturday Night right, right, Fever right. when you think of a these dance movies, movie yeah step yeah. up. The dance hall culture has never had their version. Other like there's dance hall queen and stuff, but like a true love story, mainstream type of dance. Well, and mainstream beam is where I was going, right? right because right. here in New York City or wherever, if you live in an area like Toronto or something like that, where Caribbean culture is, is mainstream for us in our world. Yeah. When you get outside of these bubbles, you know, yeah, you get yeah, into middle life. America or you get into you know countries that don't experience Caribbean culture. I mean, it's a lot of America, by the way. Like not even. It's LA, really New LA York is, and Miami. Yeah, because L.A. doesn't know about no, Caribbean no. life. Like, it's New York and Miami. It's that's like little hubs. Yeah, that, that's real. That's real. So, I mean, we we I feel like we did it justice because once you see the film, not only does it tell the traditional love story of fish out of water, boy meets girl, boy falls in love with the entire culture, but we tell a documentary-style uh, story of dance hall in the years and how it was originated, and Beanie Man is actually the narrator. Mm. So it's actually, it's really cool because you learn something while you're being entertained. Okay, because I was going to ask him, how's your Jamaican accent? I don't have one. I'm, an, I'm, I'm American. <laughs> ask her. We, we could not let that happen. I'm sorry. As a true advocate of the culture, no, Nick, you can't speak Yo, Nick would have gotten played. You know how big a risk Nick would have been taking? Come on, man. I'm smarter than Nick's that. Nick's aware of his brand. Come and on, Nick came man. Out right, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Nick. What? What? Let me hear your best patois. No. <laughs> Maybe, not during the promotion. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> At another time. Yeah, that's the thing. One thing you will not see me doing while I'm promoting this movie is speaking with patois or dancing. You're not going to see happening. it. Not happening. Not happening. So what do you play in the film? Uh, I go by the name of Tarzan. It's a character that uh, was locked up in, in Brooklyn for about five years. And to escape this environment... He goes to his family in Jamaica where Buster Rhymes is actually my cousin uh, and stays with him. And then that's kind of where the, the story ensues and the ride goes from there. So you're like okay. a second generation Exactly. My mom uh, is accent. played by Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, wow, there's and, some stars. Yeah, yo, yo, let's yeah, go. Yeah, we out there. <laughs> we out here. So and then so, you know, we, we make that connection between, you know, Buster kind of was like he used to stay with me in, in the States. So this is kind of, he's returning the favor and I get Wait, out. Wait, Lou Gossett Jr.'s in it? Yeah, we got Oscar Award winners in this joint. So this is on YouTube Red. Yes, sir. Um, Which YouTube Red is a subscription-based uh, original content on yeah. YouTube. So yeah. you can just go right onto your YouTube app. Get Boom. that YouTube Red and you can have a movie. It's just, it's their same version of, you know, all the other subscriptions uh, that are out there. But this is like specifically to Google and YouTube. And so when does this drop? This drops, it's out now. 
It's out now. Oh, August 2nd. There it is. That's today. That's today. Krisha, tell me a little bit about your character. My character, I get to play a villain. A villainess. You ain't hard. <laughs> a villainess. Her yellow ass ain't hurt nobody. Listen, oh, that's what it's about. It's about her being yellow. So if you understand how the Jamaican culture very, is. Very complexion. Yo, oriented. the complexion, the complexionism down there is real. And then so she's she's the, what do they call it? The, it, the brownie? A browning. Oh, yeah. Browning, but I'm an uptone, uptone drama queen. You're from the nice uptone. part of town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, one, one of the parts the girl calls me uptone skittle. I say, oh, yeah, I call it uptone skittle. Uptone <laughs> skittle. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I get to cause a whole heap of trouble, as I like to say. Um, but he, he finds himself a little girlfriend. You know, when when she's a little girlfriend. See, I'm getting back into it. You find yourself your little girlfriend. (laughs) Who's actually an amazing actress. She's new on the scene. Kimberly Patterson, like he said. And, um, you know, I'm used to getting what what I want. So I basically go after the man in... You know, cause a whole bunch of trouble. That's you beat character. this bitch up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of fighting in there. Some chick fighting. Yeah. There's some chick dance battling. There's dance battles. Yeah, yes, yeah. I have my uptown dance crew. Like you know, the dance elements incorporated in there, and and but we had a lot of fun regardless. So, so. is it uh, is it more like like serious? kind of romance movie or hardcore dance battle bring it on kind of movie I think it's a little bit of both and there's the, and there's a little shots in there too I mean like it's a, it's some real life stuff where you know uh Ninja Man Kali Buzz a lot of those kind of people are in there playing the villains wow, Ninja Kamani, Man's in there too yeah Kamani Marley Ooh. every we, we out, wow. we out here you definitely got to see it like I the, see this movie. Yeah. the whole culture I'm watching came, it today yeah the whole culture came through and represented real heavy and uh but it is it's all the best dancers for, from Jamaica it's funny because when we went down there and we experienced it I said I want to make this film and I want it to be raw and true so everybody that's dancing in this dance hall right now I want them in the movie so all the real crews that's everybody dope. so it, it, it's true to and it. have you done a screening yet in Jamaica have you done any screenings where you could get feedback from people who lived this? now the thing that's amazing really was a dream come true is this film debuted at the Toronto Film Festival at wow. TIFF, and that's where you know we sold it to YouTube Red so that obviously like you said the Caribbean culture in Toronto is like second to none uh, but what we haven't had the opportunity to do yet is have an actual premiere in Jamaica. We've had screenings all over the world, but we kind of been saving the one for Jamaica, so now we can go down. So, Krisha, I want to talk to you now because you know how critical yes. and opinionated yes. Jamaican and, and dance hall is. <laughs> Absolutely. How do you see the, the final product? I saw the final product in the screen, uh, our last screening like um, for BET Weekend in L.A. And how do you feel about it? I have to say there was a moment where I got teary-eyed because I was so proud of the images that were captured, like just the the edge but the beauty of Kingston and even the dance culture. Like so many people hear about dance hall music, but they don't know about the subculture of dance hall dancing. So I, the best way I explain it is kind of how like break dancers, West Coast hip hop have their subculture. Like we have our celebrities and our dance celebrities, I should say. And there's just a, such a surge, a vibrant community that the world doesn't even realize how much we impact the world. To me, I'm a little biased. Jamaica is one of the most influential nations in the no, world. We, we recently have had conversations yes. about that specifically for such a tiny place to have such a huge influence on the feel and texture culturally worldwide is incredible yeah so to me this movie only uh you know solidifies that there's one line even in in the trailer that says you know the rest of the world doesn't realize that rihanna and beyonce didn't make up those dance moves they come from somewhere they come from the dance hall so to me when i get to hear things like that like it it just it just feels good that there's something in the mainstream media uh, marketplace that is giving context so that the world knows that there's a foundation and there's roots to all of this and like i said i got teary eyed cuz i was like i was like yes nick <laughs> we did it <laughs> so you feel like you you hit a home run yeah absolutely all right so now for you this is your first this is your first. First. First acting thing. Would, did you ever think you were going to go down this path? Because we've all around here watched you work the songs and put the songs out yeah. and work the clubs and be on on the reggae tip and all that for the station. But did you think ever this was going to be your path? I absolutely always thought it was a part of my path. Um, I, I started taking acting classes many years ago because one thing... I, I explain to people is that music and acting to me go hand in hand. You know, I've been signed to a major label for over 
a decade. And in that world, I didn't always get to write my own music. I had songs given to me. Or as artists know, you might write an album in one phase of your life and you're still performing that record 10 years ago. So you have to act. I have to sing a record that I might have never written or felt, but I, it's my job to convince the, the audience that, that, is, that, is, that is my emotion. So to me, acting and, and music have always gone hand in hand. So it's an avenue I've always wanted to that's such a That's such a sort of basic thought that has n I've never heard expressed, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Like you think about You've like... You've never heard that before? No, well, we, and we've done 5,000 interviews. I've never, because think about it, Rihanna, when you think about it in, to a certain degree, like Rihanna's the ultimate actor. Rihanna doesn't write her music very often. She's like my, my favorite pop artist probably. Mm -hmm. And Rihanna owns like these it. songs, yeah. but someone yeah. came and wrote them for and her. And she acts too. And she does act too. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's That was well said. Nick Cannon, King of Dance Hall, available yeah. on YouTube. Right? Uh, we have somebody from YouTube here. Do you think we covered off on the YouTube <laughs> thing? Because you were saying some things before this interview that, Come over come here. Over come here. over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over All you need to know is to go to YouTube Red today to yes. watch it. It's up. It's but live. can I That's just go on need. the YouTube app? Yes. Go over to YouTube. You'll get everything you need to know right through the if, YouTube And if you app. search for it, it'll come up. Yes, absolutely. But then it may say, okay, we well, need to sign up for YouTube Red to watch this. Absolutely. Got yes, it. absolutely. And I also want to talk to you at some point about YouTube TV, which I think is very cool as well. Oh, all right. Well, I, we'll come back. I heard right Nick Cannon's street. time to promote just this Nick Cannon. Well, I'm not promoting. <laughs> I want the product. Yeah. Yeah. I currently have Sling, but I kind of want to move over to YouTube. Because like there's all these it. new options, Ebro, to get you talk out of the me. cable game. Okay. Because these are all different ways to get you out of paying So wait, there's a YouTube Live? Is that what There's I heard? YouTube, YouTube TV. TV. Correct. We have YouTube TV, which we launched a few months and ago. And what's that about? You it's can pick channels, right? You can pick channels. So if you were to go to ABC Live right now. Is it better right than Hulu now, Live? Well, I am not uh, <laughs> a say jurisdiction yes. to say, yes. say but <laughs> I, am, I said yes. So <laughs> Nick says yes. I believe so. <laughs> so let's go with it. Yes. So it's live TV programming straight through the YouTube TV app. You can How much is it a month? $39 a month. $39. Oh, that's right. Hulu. How many channels you get to pick? A lot. A lot more of than a lot more of than fifty, house. more than fifty. I believe so. Yes, and we're continuing to build new partnerships. See, this so is already better than Hulu Live. Hulu, Hulu Live better holler at us. This is better than Hulu Live because <laughs> <laughs> Hulu Live was is uh, thirty nine ninety nine, fifty channels. But yeah. I gotta be honest. I, can I tell you the truth though? Go I don't want to get much more than fifty. Then we're back in cable again. I like the idea of like no, but YouTube these are the TV. channels I watch. No, but YouTube TV. But they give you the fifty on Hulu Live. If YouTube TV you is telling pay. me for thirty nine, I pick what I want. You pick That's from amazing. Them. Hulu Live <laughs> is just like boom. Here's your fifty. Right. My, my sling I pick, but I only pay like twenty a month, and I pick twenty channels. So I just picked. I did it all so to you watch wrestling. A dollar a channel. Something like that. But all I wanted before was USA and like a couple of different things. Right. Anyways, there's lots of options. But YouTube Red's where you see the movie. <laughs> now I want to ask Nick. I love the options. Nick, when did you decide that your new look publicly was going to be Tiger from Mike Tyson's Punch? <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Sheik is in the building, B. <laughs> nah, we talked about. We, oh, you weren't here last time. No, I was right. in. We talked about the new. We talked child. about my sovereignty. We talked yeah. about just you know rocking my crown everywhere I go. That's that's. So what this is about. full time all the time. Yeah, man, it, it has to be. I mean, obviously, I don't you know I don't be hooping in the turban, but it's like it's it's certain times when I show up. This is how I show up. Um, and also, did when you guys were here last time, you were not able, I'm guessing, to ask Nick what his once working relationship was with the currently being. Uh, destroyed R. Kelly. Oh, no. Nah, we didn't. Did we talk? Nah, no. Because he no. wasn't as... He it wasn't, wasn't right now. Like, yeah, yeah. He wasn't but, all up in the sex cult world. Um, So, yeah. W I I've never discussed that with you. You had a great record with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, w what that's was my man. I th that's the thing, too, man. And and to all of these other artists that's coming out, like, taking... Other artists have come out? Well, <laughs> I'm saying taking shots at him, like, having, having an opinion on this man before, you know, with, without even knowing all of the facts... I go back to saying I, I can't be judgmental based off of anything, you know. So when I see Kells and even in his past, I mean, like that that man in his, what all the crosses he have to bear, that's his life. I've been in the studio with this dude, and he's a genius in the studio. I've been on the stage with this dude. I've never been in this man's bedroom. So whatever you don't know anything about, about whatever he have sex in the same room together. Whatever what R. Kelly is doing behind you the closet, I don't give a damn. Like I got my own issues I gotta worry about. So I But I can, we can all agree. And I've been vocal about this. Yeah, please. R. Kelly's past first, I think he's some scumbag. He's done scumbag things in the past. And I've right. heard things about his McDonald's and traveling around the McDonald's and the high schools getting out of there. <laughs> See, but that, I mean, hey. But so knows that's true, right? Yeah. And the videotape, fam, it was crazy. <laughs> yes. So that that's how I feel about that. Right. 
if he didn't have this past, right, and there were adult women, 18 and older, right, who wanted to be involved in some group family organized thing, right, that harem. didn't involve <laughs> someone getting beaten right. or abused or drug addicts. You'd addict. be like, women, you'd be all for it. Women and men. And we took calls. Remember, we yeah. took calls from people who was like, yeah, now nah, I'm in a, what did they call it? A polyamorous polyamorous relationship oh, yeah, yeah. polyamorous yeah. relationship yeah. where you know I'm this is my girlfriend we're in love but she knows I'm having sex with this one and she's having sex with another one and but and that's their life and that's the how they they, move. and the reason they don't share it publicly is obviously because people in the public this would society be don't understand it right then the thing that makes the R Kelly thing crazy was I heard he sat down with Tavis Smiley. Again, he need to stop. No, no, sitting. no, no, no. Back in the day. Oh, uh, you talking about when this he said how? No, when he, he, he said when you say teenager. Yeah. Oh, do you mean? <laughs> I was like, you forgot, we forgot about. Come on, we Kale. forgot about. That. Don't say that. I'm not no, this is the thing, and you because I'm a comedian, so I got all the jokes. We've been inviting Kells on uh, wilding out for the longest because I got pee jokes galore. But <laughs> in all seriousness, if we are gonna hang this man on the cross, like you, you gonna have to. We gonna have to talk about Roman Polanski. We're going to have to talk about all of these other people who have also done very similar things. Like or even, worse. Or, or worse. That's what I'm saying. People marrying 13-year-olds and all, like, all that. And then you have to talk about culture in general. Now, what R. Kelly does, like it's always been speculation to a sense. you know. And even when you talk to him about it, he has a very strong opinion of people trying to tear him down from the beginning. From since the uh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah days and stuff. He feels like that he was... It, it's always been painted a, a horrible picture, and they've been trying it from the tapes and all that stuff. That's that man's opinion. I've heard him say it himself that, yo, they, they're after me, and they're using this to come at me. But then again, the man also wrote, from the first time we heard him, he don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. And like, seems and like you're ready. Like <laughs> my, my, my mind's telling, telling me no, but my, but my body's telling my me body. yeah. Yeah. He set himself up for yeah. this. <laughs> But all I'm saying is, I'm not the one to judge. I can't judge that. Here you go, here you go. Teenage girls. When you say teenage, <laughs> how old are we talking? Yo, I fell out of my chair oh when I first heard him say that. And by the way, it was He was trying to give him a shot, too. It wasn't Chavis, to... it was our boy Torre. Yeah, yeah. Torre, sorry about that. All Torre. he had to say was, no. <laughs> yeah, teenage, what? No. <laughs> Adults, I, I like adults. Well, no. I think, and you know what? <laughs> he, he was playing was probably, with the line 18. He was playing with the 18, That's 19. Right. He, and and I, Kells likes that as long as you remember. And then it was at the Apollo, like one of his the old performances. Yeah. Y'all see it? He had a big ass sign <laughs> that said 18, <laughs> like must be at least 18. 18. They was, but now, and he was like, and now, he was pointing mind at you, the sign. Mind you, mind you, this was public announcement, R. Kelly. This was back in the day. So first he, album. He liked which, that line. No, but, he but really now does. remind, when <laughs> R. Kelly first came out, wasn't he like 26? He was a young cat, yeah. 25, not, 26? He was too old to be hang, hooking up with Aaliyah, if that's what you're asking. She no, like, I'm not saying that. your opinion. No, 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 but Aaliyah was 14. I think he was in his 20s. No, I'm not even talking about we, that. I'm, I'm just about saying about being a 24, 25, 26 year old. 24 and, year olds date 18 year olds. That's, that's more common. It does happen. Yes, yes. But, and even when I brought up the BBD I lyric, agree. remember the backstage, yeah. underage, underage adolescent, uh, adolescent, uh, LL lyrics pulled up to the high school to see what, uh, at the parking lot. Like, that's. That, that's, that's no, that's that, always been there. Yeah. That, that part has always been there. He just seems to have a real <laughs> appreciation. <laughs> It's gross. Of it. well, I, and I, I don't think he articulates himself well. No. That's the problem. That's what I feel like. He doesn't have... Like, you don't say. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I think a lot, maybe that's why the that age... That in there, too. Yeah. He also... Well, man, no. I don't wanna, I I'm love, always standing up on my man Kells because from artist to artist, we appreciate him for his art. And as a community, the, I mean, I may he rest in peace, everything from Michael Jackson to all of these things that... There's things that we, even as a culture, we kind of got to look aside eye, but because we love their entertainment and their art so much, we accept their art. And then sometimes and I go And then down don't really, the, whatever the man does, I'm not here for that. Sometimes I do go down the road, though, Ebro. I will say, sometimes I go down the road of every highest level black guy goes down. They get, they, they cut, come on, talk about one. it. Come on, like, talk it is, about it. It is hard. Like, talk about talk it, about, my brother. Talk about, you're talking about Jackson, oh. Tyson. Cosby. Cosby. Keep going. Jordan almost went. Jordan almost went. Then his dad ended up dead. He survived. But you know what I'm saying? Like, everything. Like, now you're talking. Now, everyone now. goes down. So it's like, sometimes it's like, damn, but what if they did set them up? Like, I don't know. 
Or I know what, it sounds what crazy. about accountability? It's what if they really systemic are messing Maybe they are. Girls, I know. Like, I know. That was my daughter. I would definitely feel the same type of way. It's all, I, I, if it was your daughter, I, I, though, you yeah. wouldn't have brought her to R. Your Kelly concert. Yeah, your so R. let's meet R. Kelly. Yeah. He's on the road with exactly. it. And that wasn't always the case, though. No, you're right. There were some cases, but that wasn't always the case. And R. Kelly, you guys know. He's been a dirtbag. We're not going to sit up. I mean, look, and Bill Cosby, too, evidence call, no, That's that. what I'm saying. If we're going to call one man a dirtbag, we got to call them all dirtbags. Dirt dirt Let's keep it. Like, but how about this? It's a lot. The president is a it's fucking dirtbag. It's a dirtbag. Dirt so it's a I'm lot a dirt of bag. fucking dirtbags. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even trying to mince my and words at all. a dirtbag, have you ever skirted dirtbag? Me? Yes. Like, in what way? Like, I mean, where's what, the What do you mean? Yes. Yes. You say teenager. How dirty are we talking? How dirty are we talking? <laughs> Yo, King of Dance Hall is available on YouTube Red right now. Get to your YouTube app. It'll get you there. Check this joint out from Nick Cannon. It's up there today. I'm going in today. Yeah, yeah. See that? I'm watching it. You talk for the culture. Some of the legends that are in there. Like yeah. I was like Nick Cannon, Shh. Dance Hall. Stop it. Yeah. And then Creasy was here. I was like, okay. Yeah. Beanie right. Man then is Beanie narrating. Man. It? Yeah, that's, that's the like... that's the purpose. Like, and even if you see like the the artwork and stuff, I took myself out of it because I know. The focus is gonna be like, is Nick Cannon in there speaking patois, <laughs> acting like he's from Jamaica? Nah, that's not what it's about. You know what I mean? I, you don't do one bo bo. None of that. Like you, don't you do one of. Well, I mean, my <laughs> dancing, my my dancing is in there, but <laughs> but it's very. It's How's very, your bogle? How's your bogle? It's, it's, it's in there. It's Pepper in C, there. signal the play. <laughs> it's it's the real Find stuff. The river. It's the dance crew how, stuff. How much do you dance in the movie? Uh, I would, he dancing. I'm dancing. Give it a run. You give it a run. I'm, I'm dancing, but it ain't. It's, it's with the crew. You know what I mean? So that and that's what when you go gangsters dance down there. Oh, for like, sure. It's not like on some step up stuff. Like the gangsters dance. So right, right, we right. we with the crew and we doing what we supposed to do. Look, man, uh, Krisha, you making people proud. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Edmonton, right. stand up. Well, wait. Can I also say that I have 13 records in this movie? Oh yeah. Oh, dope. this 13? is like my purple rain. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, to put it, I, I mean it's. Well, that's to very keep it up, she is the muse for the film. Do you I have mean, sex in the movie? Not me. Yeah. No. Why are you saying like that? It, it was close. Well, you went to Purple it Rain. Was close. I was <laughs> No, no. It's her clothes is not well, her her on the whole time. Her clothes are always <laughs> almost off anyway. Let's try. Yes. Clothes are almost always off that's anyway. That's for the culture. That's for the culture. Oh, that's for the culture. I love that. The so you're going to want to see this film if you want to see Kreisha and her drawings. There it is. There it is.